Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Million Duck Challenge in Europa Unisalis 4 as Portugal. I made a bit of a mistake. Uh, I No, I didn't make a mistake, but I wanted to show you something. We picked the new ID here, uh, the free subjects ID, which gives plus 10% good uh, modifier. And I wanted to, to compare before I clicked the button and after it, but uh, I don't know for sure if this production is already updated. The income from production by clicking that button but since we're almost at the end of the month uh, I, I don't think the trade has updated but we, we can check uh, there we go so the production had updated but the trade apparently didn't so we got a bit of uh, money from that in terms of production and in terms of trade uh, that's actually quite helpful uh, and I think we might even go in and try to... I'm still not sure which is more helpful to me. The global trade power, the plus 10% to the global trade power, which is is helping me getting the trade around, or the production. I think it depends on my total um, bonus to trade power, uh, which is actually fairly big. We got a uh, uh, more than a hundred percent bonus towards global trade power, so uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But we also have a very large bonus to goods produced. I think yes, goods produced efficiency one hundred fifty-five percent. So it will be one hundred and sixty-five. In for instance, in that province, and here it will be uh, two hundred and seventeen. So the, for instance, in provinces like this, it will be. Uh, less effective so we'll see and we're gonna continue playing uh, we will do some uh, colonizing I will try to ramble a lot less uh, during the intros so we're gonna stop the intro here I will be back with hopefully a lot of highlights uh, I want to end the series on a high with nice highlights nice videos and of course after this one we're gonna need do a new one a new challenge but I have to figure out what kind of challenge uh, by the way, if you like this series, make sure to subscribe and to like the video, it helps me a lot. I'll see you when something interesting happens. I've built a small trade fleet which is going to protect trade in the Caribbean. Uh, we actually don't have a trade fleet there. Uh, we're going to increase it to 20 to 50 ships because there's still a lot of trade sitting here which could be sent uh, our way. We also have to worry about the trade here. I mean, we are at 61% trade power. We could have could get a lot more money if you can increase the trade power. We either need some uh, uh, some of these centers of trade or we need a bigger fleet. Um, the centers of trade in the end is probably the better idea because that can give me another merchant. So we need to figure out a way to win from Malacca. Malacca however is very strong with 74 heavy ships. It actually has the most heavies in the world. I got 41 which is Decent, I'd say, but uh, we, we cannot stand against those uh, 71 heavies, I think. So we're going to figure out a way to maybe attack Malacca, uh, maybe increase our uh, force here, and then grab these centers of trade, because I think they are really important for us to consolidate the trade income. Our admiral of our fleet, which was protecting trade here in the Sevilla node, has died. So uh, let's quickly get a new one. Hopefully we can get a good one. We should at least get two Minerva. That's four. Uh, that's okay. That's, uh, I think, 10% uh, trade power. Or maybe even a, a little bit more. 20%. Um, uh, because, yeah, it's 5% per, per pip. That's actually really, uh, really powerful. The six Minerva one was, was really good. Three star. Hopefully we uh, we can get a, a nice one later down the line again. Uh, maybe in the end of the at the end of the campaign we will probably sacrifice all our monarch points just to get some money. Get going. Uh, Spain is at war with Morocco. We have allied Morocco uh, uh, a while ago, which may come interesting. Uh, he, he is at war with Spain because uh, just Spain basically. So maybe he, he should have called me in. He should just call me in, mate. I, I will I will join your war easily. Uh, I know you get a 90 stack here, but 
Maybe I should bring uh, bring some troops home from uh, from here. But um, let's not do that just yet. Let's let's wait. Maybe maybe he will call me in. Okay, finish the plutocratic ID groups. Uh, ID group that will allow us to get a whole bunch of new policies. Um, I don't think we're gonna get one just yet. Um, maybe we will get rid of that one, the global settler increase plus 20. We are at 155 settler increase, I believe. Uh, let me check that for a moment. Yeah, 135, but we are... Um, this is tropical and we are um, not honoring the Treaty of the Tears. So we would basically be at 145 base um, settler increase, which is probably enough. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get rid of that policy, so that saves a diplomatic spot here. I think we're gonna go with uh, the trade efficiency. Um, or the naval force limit. Let's. Uh, I think I think let's let's do the naval force limit first, and let's uh, build up that trade fleet. Yeah, we're gonna build some trade fleets. I kind of wanna have a trade fleet in the Cape, like let's say 25 ships. What's that? I don't know. Should have read that. It didn't sound good. Um, we uh, we should send down some ships here. Maybe some ships in the Ivory Coast, just to uh, transfer a little bit more trade power, increase our fleet here in the Caribbean, so that we uh, we send as much as possible home. We could increase a fleet fleet in uh, in Malacca as well. So that's what we're gonna work on. How big can we make a fleet now? Yeah, so we have uh, slots for more than 130 ships. Uh, we can easily go over the force limit by a couple. Uh, probably 100 ships uh, will probably make us uh, still make us uh, a lot more money than what they cost. So that's uh, what we're gonna focus on next. It is actually amazing that we just <laughs> for the first time we finished the mission. Trustworthy allies. It's just how did I survive without any? Good allies. Uh, I got Morocco as an ally and uh, Graaf Reinet, which uh, originally was a trade city. I created a trade city here, but for some reason he decided to go on a killing spree and <laughs> he's doing pretty well for himself. He's uh, actually quite rich because he's uh, making a lot of trade uh, from the Cape. And at a certain point, there was more than 40 ducats sitting here just. So he was he was making like fifty something ducats a month out of it. Um, I'm trying to uh, to get him into uh, accepting an a offer for vassalization so that he can transfer trade power to me. Uh, but that's not the goal of this clip. The clip is here so that we can click this button. Diplomatic reputation for uh, let's see how long for twenty five years. That's actually uh, quite good. Uh, we have two non-tributary subjects, so diplomatic annexation costs don't really doesn't do anything for us. But this is actually quite good. More of navies plus ten percent national sailors modifier. Well, our sailor issues are over for good, I think. So really do that much. Um, but we dominate trade. And that gives us local trade power plus 10% in the Sevilla node. And I think Portugal, yeah, I think this is for the, yeah, the home trade node will get uh, plus 10%, plus 10 trade power. But the rest of the campaign, oh, I thought, you know what, I have to wait to click this button. But we're going to definitely click this button now. Local development costs minus 5%, that's really nice. Expand overseas is also really nice. For 25 years, growing East Indian trade. Trade efficiency plus 30% and global trade power plus 2. That's definitely something that we want to wait until the very last 25 years. Or maybe if, if we have the idea that we can get it earlier, we will click the button a little bit earlier. But the 30% trade efficiency, that's really, really good. I mean, we are at 82, so we could end up with 112. Um... So that would basically more than double our income here. So normally, yeah, we collect 304 ducats and because of a trade efficiency it turns into 585. Um, so that would mean we would be above 620, I think. 
you press that button now, but imagine if this number goes up even further later in the campaign. But we're not. We're we're having two buttons here, which uh, we're gonna wait to click this one and the build many factories. Um, because this is a, a lot of flat money, just 40,000 ducats. This is increasing, and we might get 20k ducats out of it. Uh, which, in the light of 1 million, isn't that much, but still, it's a, it's a nice sum to have. Um, yeah, we're doing uh, we're doing actually fine. We played for 9 years, I'm gonna play a little bit more, and then we're gonna end this uh, episode. And there we go, the year is 1700, the light, the enlightenment has hit where did it hit um we are enlightened fairly enlightened where did it hit what constantinople all right um that's okay uh we were about to take the tech because we got the get rid of the ahead of time penalty so we will get trade efficiency for the next 15 years 15 years, yes, and we will get 20% production efficiency for the next 15 years, which is uh, rather nice. I also decided on the last two ID groups, uh, Age of Absolutism is about to end in 10 years, which is really, really good, because then we can start on the Age of Revolution and we can do some, uh, some good stuff. Well, uh, uh, we can... <laughs> basically start the golden era but we will do that later in the age of absolutism and we decided on IDs we will be going with naval IDs and quantity and that seems a bit strange at first but look at quantity the production quota act the top one goods produced modify plus 20% that's really really strong it is another um, diplomatic um, policy so yes it's gonna be heavy on our diplomatic points but that's okay um, I, I think later in the campaign we will just spend our all our monarch points on you know, on policies or most of them at least. Uh, we'll probably want to st uh, well, we don't really need uh, diplotech. Ooh, I did something wrong there. We don't really need diplotech anymore, I believe, for anything really interesting. Uh, I mean, yeah, trade efficiency could go up by. 6% but the policies give way more trade efficiency although maybe uh, level 26 for the great frigate would be nice to just to have a little bit more trade power from ships so I think at um, level 26 we might just stop hopefully that doesn't uh, give us any trouble with the uh, colonial nation, but is it, if it does, then we might consider. Yeah, we probably should stay ahead on time, by the way, because the uh, twenty percent trade efficiency bonus. Yes, we definitely and the minus corruption. Yes, we definitely need to stay ahead of time with uh, with Diplotech. But that's so far, it's been really easy to be ahead of time, and we have been constantly developing our production provinces, uh, mainly here in uh, in Indonesia. I mean, we developed this up. Uh, really really high already because some high development provinces here it's also fairly high uh, we try to develop only the uh, should try for the good trade goods for instance uh, ivory and things like that we keep developing those in our trade companies because we get the full production value and we get the trade value because uh, the trade is, is sent to us so yeah, these are really good provinces to uh, to keep developing. We should, we should check here. We could probably, yeah, for instance, ivory here. And we do all sorts of stuff. I think we spend at least uh, during one tech cycle. I think we spend at least uh, twelve hundred points to development, maybe even more. So it's not a big deal to stay ahead of time and to make sure that we have all the policies that we need. Um. And last but not least, uh, yeah, was was there any other thing? Not really that that sprang out of it. Maybe some with uh, maritime IDs. Was there a plus? No, galley cost a galley combat ability. That's not really good. Naval IDs though is something that we're going to do because we can have all sorts of good stuff with it. Uh, we can have the transportation act with economic ideas as production efficiency plus 10% and another goods produced, which is really, really good. 
and maritime, including with maritime ideas, is also really good for us. The naval force limit is plus 15, so that means more boats, more boats equals more trade power, and more trade power equals more money, so we will uh, be sooner to the 1 million mark. And that's probably it, I think. There was something with, yeah, with the trade IDs, and uh, we could we could tr no we don't have uh, admin admin IDs so a uh, fortified trading post with trade IDs it's also another diplomatic uh, policy so we will end up with like six or seven diplomatic policies but that's fine I think we're having three diplomatic policies right now and we're still making 13 points per month but that's because we have a plus five advisor here I would love to get a plus five advisor here uh, which is finally possible, uh, not a military advisor, unfortunately. Um, although, I'm not sure, the only thing we can do with admin points is developing for tax. And we're not getting that much money from tax, as you can see. It's just, normally I would say 29 ducats from tax is fairly decent, but not in this case. On the other hand, uh, if we want to develop... Um, Provinces keep developing provinces like this. We'd have to develop the tax side as well but, So we uh, we might do a plus five on that one um, Not sure though. Is there anything else we can do with admin points? No, not really. Yeah, we can lower inflation, but that's That's doing virtually nothing for us. We could boost stability, but we are at three stability uh, throughout most of the uh, campaign already so it's not much that it will give us, uh, so I'd rather stay with the production efficiency and get a, gain a little bit more money out of it, instead of spending money on something that we... Uh, normally, I, I, it would be really helpful for coring and things like that, but we barely have to core, so... Uh, it's just not worth it. We, we want money. That's, that's the goal here. Just give me all the money. So, uh, yeah, it's the... 18th century now officially we are at the year 1700 I was hoping I could make a profit of a thousand ducats by now um, didn't didn't happen um, but we have a we have a big amount of cash here we also can click this button for more cash so we have a decent head start here. We got still 120 years to go, and with these policies and the golden era and things like that, I think things will really, really ramp up uh, in the last uh, 20 to 50 years of this campaign. I think I think the numbers will will probably be uh, skyrocketing, but still, an, an income of 800 ducats is still really, really decent. I'm not sure if we can we can double it, but we'll see. We will see where, where we end up with. Uh, so far, I'm really pleased with it, and I really like it. I really enjoy it. Uh, later uh, in the campaign, uh, we will of course stop colonizing, so that it saves us 126 ducats. Uh, yes, I'm spending a lot of money on colonies because I think um, it pays off. But I think we're now at the point that it doesn't pay off anymore to spent uh, 52 ducats a month on a colony to uh, to finish it I think I think it will never uh, earn itself back so I think I think we will do this colonial cycle and then we will just use a three colonists uh, to colonize and not bother with uh, the full colonization that will save us uh, about 120 ducats so that's uh, then we will be at 560. But yeah, I think we can definitely make it. All right, thank you for watching. I was planning on not rambling too much. I still did a bit. Sorry for that. I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.